This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 2501, Why You Shouldn't Do Cardio Every Day, by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. And I'm your host and narrator, Dr. Neil. Happy Saturday and welcome back to another weekend edition of Optimal Health Daily. This is where I read to you from some of the best health and fitness blogs on the web, and always with my commentary at the end. And with that, let's get right to the post as we optimize your life. Why You Shouldn't Do Cardio Every Day by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com The Importance of Rest and Recovery Days Last year, I trained a highly active young professional who had the goal of being at competitor-level muscle mass and body fat percentage. His commitment to attaining a ripped physique was realistic at his current level of fitness, and he arrived at every session with a fantastic can-do attitude. However, as months of training went on, he did not make significant gains either in muscle mass, in fat loss, or in his performance. He maintained his healthy weight, but still carried that small, baffling margin of fat that is maddening to people who want to lean out. Then I began to notice that every time I arrived at his apartment gym for our training sessions, he was warming up on the elliptical. It was so consistent that one day I casually asked him, you're not doing the elliptical every day, are you? As it turned out, he wasn't just warming up. He was banging out 30 to 60 minutes of cardio every single day on top of our training sessions. If you take rest days, I said conversationally, it will give your body a chance to catch up with itself and you will make more progress. Otherwise, your body is just adapting and you'll probably lose muscle. His half-joking reply revealed why he was not making progress. Rest days are for the weak. Rest days are for the wise. Overtraining especially doing cardio every day, is more than a mistake. It is a mindset. It is a ritualistic death grip on calorie burn motivated by fear of weight gain that blocks people from their goals by allowing the body to adapt to non-stop training. You need rest days because your body learns how much energy it needs to expend for your lifestyle and it adapts through efficiency. You need challenge, not efficiency. In fact, The best way to provide metabolic challenge for your body is to vary your workouts and to give yourself plenty of rest and recovery time. So here are my top 10 tips for maximizing your cardio work. Tip number one, do something fun and easy on rest days. When I advocate rest, I'm not saying you should spend the day being a couch potato. Instead, keep everything moving by taking long walks or doing gentle yoga. However, Avoid formal heart-pumping exercise, even jogging or biking. Tip number two, limit your rest days to three per week. In other words, taking rest days isn't a license to exercise once a week. It just means that you're peppering your exercise days, which should be quite intense, with recovery days in between. One to three days per week is sufficient. Tip number three, shorten but intensify your workouts. You don't get extra points for long sessions. Focus on getting 20 or 30 minute difficult high intensity interval workouts into your schedule three to five times a week, mixing up weight training, cardio, and muscle areas. Tip number four, eat fewer carbohydrates on rest days. Notice I didn't say no carbohydrates. You will still need energy for going about the business of your day, but not as much as if you were going to hit the gym. Tip number five, never exercise sore muscle areas. If you are sore, that is your body's message to take it easy. If your legs are still stiff, but you've already taken a rest day, don't run. Take a day to work on your arms, chest, or core. Tip number six, foam roll to help speed recovery. Using a foam roller helps to increase circulation, relax chronically tightened muscles, and improve flexibility. Foam rolling is a great activity to do before stretching on rest days, and it will help ease soreness, especially in the glutes. Resting is not for the weak, remember? Tip number seven, shift your habits so that you are more active overall without formal exercise. If you have to kill it at the gym every single day to feel active, then you need to incorporate more on your feet movement throughout the day. An hour of intense exercise doesn't compensate for eight or nine hours of sitting. 
Tip number eight, get your sleep along with other healthy habits. Sleep is an important component of recovery and having the same routine every night as well as the same waking time every morning helps with restorative rest. Decrease screen time in the evening and make your bedroom a place of peace and renewal. Tip number nine, hydrate well. Your body naturally detoxifies when it is adequately hydrated. Drink plenty of water on rest days as well as on exercise days, and soreness may heal more quickly. And most importantly, tip number 10, trust your body and trust the process. Overtraining, especially doing too much cardio, and dieting come from a place of fear. Rest comes from a place of trust. Your body is not an enemy that must be punished into submission through exercise. It is a partner on your journey, and it will work with you when its needs are met. You just listened to the post titled, Why You Shouldn't Do Cardio Every Day, by Rachel Trotta of racheltrotta.com. And I'll be right back with my commentary. When you're hiring, it feels amazing to finally close out a job search. But what if you could get rid of the search and just match? You can with Indeed. Indeed is your matching and hiring platform with over 350 million global monthly visitors and a matching engine that helps you find quality candidates fast. Ditch the busy work. Use Indeed for scheduling, screening, and messaging. 93% of employers agree Indeed delivers the highest quality matches compared to other job sites. One of the things I love about Indeed is that it filters out incompatible applicants. So when you're hiring, the process is much faster and you only have to consider applicants that are already likely to be a great fit. And listeners of this show will get a $75 sponsored job credit to get your jobs more visibility at indeed.com slash health. Just go to indeed.com slash health right now and support our show by saying you heard about Indeed on this podcast. Indeed.com slash health. Terms and conditions apply. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. Rest to lose weight. Rest to gain muscle. It sounds like the exact opposite of what we should be doing, right? But Rachel's explanation of why this is so important for our fitness goals was perfect. It's not about being a couch potato. It's not about giving yourself so much rest that you will lose some of the progress you've made. Instead, it's about supporting your growth. It may mean mixing up your routine somehow, even if that means performing less intense exercises or, as Rachel mentioned, being a bit better about sitting less and getting in more steps throughout the day. But be honest with yourself. I know it can be easy to convince ourselves that we deserve a rest day, even when we haven't participated in structured activity for over three days. So yes, truly listen to your body, but make sure that its messages aren't getting lost in translation along the way. All right, that does it for today. Thank you so much for listening. I'll see you back here on tomorrow's show where your optimal life awaits.